What's up space fans, Jack here with another Starship update. This week we saw loads of testing on the flight critical hydraulic power units for Booster 7, plus more ships and test articles getting ready for testing, and Booster 7 underwent further pre-launch testing. But the big question is, how close are we to launch exactly? Let's dive right into it. This week began with the radically different Ship 26 being transported to the launch site at night. This ship has the tank section and the main body of a Starship, but does not feature aerodynamic elements such as flaps or thermal protection tiles, though some sections of it do appear to have the studs they are installed on. We can only speculate what Ship 26 is for, perhaps use in a propellant depot or for fuel tanker testing. A test article to validate something with a tank section without the need for flaps, or Maybe it was just constructed as it is in order to build and test a Starship prototype faster. As I said, Ship 26 was transported at night, then lifted onto Pad A next to its brother, Ship 25, which currently resides on Pad B. This now means there's two Starships present at the launch site and awaiting testing. In case you forgot, Pad A is now used for cryo-testing ships before they have engines installed, meaning Ship 26 has no Raptors installed right now, and its immediate testing will be cryogenic proofing. Pad B, of course, is now used for static fire testing of ships. It seems like the work leading up to Starship's first orbital flight attempt is taking priority right now, and so we still haven't seen any testing done with Ship 25 or 26. The work leading up to the orbital test flight and the corresponding ground support equipment work have priority right now. Hence, the test campaigns for both Ship 25 and 26 appear paused. But then why move them to the launch site? Well, space is at a premium at the build site so maybe it's just down to freeing up the various bays for construction of the next vehicles. It could also be at least a little bit of PR and or optics. To test launch Starship on its first orbital flight attempt, with multiple prototypes waiting nearby to be tested themselves, certainly makes quite a statement. Here's hoping that Ship 26's upcoming test campaign gives us some more clues as to what it'll be used for. Let's move on now over to the orbital tank farm, one of the keystones to the orbital flight attempt. This week, we saw new pipes being moved and installed here. While there's always work at stage zero, this new hardware is notable. It's too early to entirely confirm what this plumbing is for, but it might be related to a possible tank farm expansion. Here, you can see pipes going into the methane side of the tank farm, close to the methane subcoolers. By my count, there's at least two subcoolers on site that haven't been installed anywhere, so this could be a prelude to that. This is the part where I mention if you want some sweet 33 engine static fire merch, or you'd like a metal print to grace your wall, check out shop.nasaspaceflight.com. Nick, myself, and other members of the team all have photos available as metal prints in our shop. And it's not just Starship. We have all kinds of spaceflight events in there. Should you want to search for a specific rocket, you can use filters on the page. We have metal prints of Starship, of course, but also Falcon Heavy, SLS, and even Delta IV Heavy to cover your needs for fancy wall decor. They're easy to hang, they look great, and they don't need a frame. Be sure to check out shop.nasaspaceflight.com or click the link in the description down below. All right, let's get back to Starbase. Let's check in on Ship 24, which is still expected to be used for Starship's first orbital flight attempt. It's still hanging out at the rocket garden, and we don't yet know when it will be transported back to the launch site for stacking on Booster 7. As always, we'll keep our eyes on road closures for Highway 4 in hopes that Ship 24 and Booster 7 are reunited again soon. Next up, scrapping of Booster 8's aft section appears paused. You can see the header tank and the booster quick disconnect plate here, which makes it obvious this is the bottom of the booster. Though scrapping of this section has been paused, what has been going on is work on the booster transport mount that holds it. As is often the case, we don't know why this work is being done, only that clearly this particular booster transport stand, for whatever reason, needed some work. It looks like new clamps are being fitted, so maybe there were some broken or fussy ones that needed swapping out. This week we also got a look inside the Star Factory building, there are multiple five ring barrels inside, which are all Starship payload section. In the ring yard in between the tents and the bays, we have Ship 27's nose cone and payload section waiting to be stacked in the high bay. Next to it is the Booster 10 methane tank section with its grid fins already integrated, awaiting further stacking itself. This isn't the last time we'll talk about Ship 27 this week, so stay tuned for more on that. Continuing our tour around the tents, a booster transfer tube is lying outside of them. It's been there for at least a few weeks. 
This massive tube transports methane inside the booster from the methane tank above the LOX tank down through the LOX tank and to the engines. Hence the name transfer tube. This part notably failed on booster 7 in one of its early tests, so we'll keep our eyes on it to see if it's integrated on a booster soon or if it gets scrapped or stored. Alright, that's enough production site for now. Let's come back here to the launch site to see what's going on. You can see the scorching the 31 engine static fire did to the legs of the orbital launch mount. At half the thrust of the booster at launch, this static fire significantly charred the legs. Nothing too bad from what we can tell, and not something we haven't already seen. Though, of course, not to this extent. The big deal here is that the concrete under the mount appears basically unharmed, so there's no huge crater like some of us feared. You can also see the movable work platform or dance floor below the orbital launch mount, allowing workers to access the underside of Booster 7. The Raptor installation platform is also waiting at the mount, so we'll be on the lookout for any Raptor swaps that may be imminent this coming week. In this frame, there's more to see than you might think. First, let's look at the orbital launch mount staircase. You can see it's been outfitted with shielding to protect it during static fire and launches. This protection is only one of many shields going up at the orbital launch mount to protect it more and more. With each passing day, more shields are going up at the orbital launch mount to protect it more and more. If you think about it, what we know as the orbital launch mount today is, in a lot of ways, still quite skeletal compared to what it will eventually look like when totally completed. Second, on the right side, you can see a hydraulic power unit, or HPU, waiting to be installed on Booster 7. Next up, more groundwork is being done in preparation to install the pipework for the DELU system. We think, but are not yet sure, that this will be an area to lay the pipes that will supply the water to the orbital launch mount. Next up, some Raptor heat shielding was removed from Booster 7. This could be related to inspecting the two engines that did not fire after engineers turned one off in the control room and one aborted during the 33 engine static fire attempt. Earlier, I mentioned a hydraulic power unit. If you were curious what an HPU looks like without its aero cover, there you have it. These units provide the hydraulic pressure to things like Raptor thrust vector control actuators, Though, if you remember, these will be removed in the upcoming Booster 9 and later Booster variants in favor of electrically actuated thrust vector controls. Here you can see the slot where the HPUs are mounted on the booster. Once the HPU itself is installed, it will be covered by a protective metal aero cover, which is what the characteristic square shape on the side of Booster 7 is. Although again, these will be deleted in Booster 9 and beyond. Jumping back to the production site, Ship 27's nose cone and payload section were moved into the high bay for stacking shortly followed by Ship 27's methane tank section. It may be that Ship 27 soon joins Ship 24, 25, and 26 to be the fourth stacked ship prototype awaiting testing. Speaking of testing, we can see here the test nose cone, aka NC31, has been moved over to the Remedio storage area in preparations for testing itself. It has had its tip removed so it can be put onto the test stand, as we saw with earlier prototypes. You can see the base of the nose cone test stand on the left, which it was lifted onto on Saturday. I'm out here to record this right now, otherwise I'd be over there recording that. Next, presumably it'll be moved to Massey's and installed in the structural test frame, also known as the nose cone jail, for testing. Starbase is, of course, always expanding, and here there's a new foundation going down for some sort of new construction. Tell us what you think in the comments it'll be. Another thing at the production site that caught our eye this week are huge pipe manifolds that were recently delivered from Kennedy Space Center. These are hanging out at SpaceX's shipping and receiving area and waiting their turn to be transported to the launch site and installed. What's really cool is that since they are next to some cars, you can really get an understanding of how huge these pipes are and how much water they will be able to provide for upcoming Starship launches. We presume this manifold will be installed once all the groundwork is completed. Some more hydraulic power unit action occurred, with one unit being installed on the south side of the booster, and the unit that had been there for the wet dress rehearsal and all the previous testing has been removed. We'll have to wait and see how fast SpaceX can install a new HPU there as these are 100% critical to the orbital launch of Starship. Once again, they are needed to gimbal Booster 7's Raptor engines, which provide necessary control authority during flight. Late in the week, Booster 7 was tested, with a partial propellant load and some quick disconnect tests. You can see here the ship quick disconnect arm retracting, and the chopsticks moving up as the tank farm prepares to fill the booster with some commodities for the test. The test flow looked like they filled the methane tank and LOX tank partially conducted some testing of the booster quick disconnect, and then ran a spin prime test of a single Raptor engine. It may have been one of the flawed engines that did not fire during the 31 engine static fire test, or it might have just been done to validate some previously gathered or perhaps simulated test data. 
In this nifty shot, you can see how the booster quick disconnect retracts and hides in its protective shell. This will be especially important during launch, as it will be happening very close to T0, before the 33 engines of the booster give the entire mount and indeed orbital pad a good roasting. Without protection, it would permanently damage the quick disconnect. Shortly after this test, the QD was reconnected to the booster, albeit a little bit slower than when it retracted. It is a quick disconnect after all, not a quick connect. It seems like we're getting into the final tests before launch. But the big question is, is launch in March actually possible? Well, according to Christian Davenport of the Washington Post, as far as the FAA is concerned, a March launch is still on the table. So that one remaining milestone of SpaceX getting a launch license from the FAA appears to not be a major hurdle. Indeed, it certainly seems as though we will see a Starship launch at some point in March. Of course, barring any major testing mishaps. After Friday's tests were complete, Booster 7 was detanked and the road was reopened. We think we're getting into the final tests needed before Ship 24 is restacked and the orbital flight attempt appears. So stay tuned for further developments and we'll keep our eyes on the prize and keep you informed. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and be excellent to each other. <laughs>